Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launch uh, of the Labour for Refugees for Alternatives to Offshore Processing. Uh, just to start with, there's a few housekeeping matters. We have a raffle uh, after the speeches, as you'd expect, and any donations uh, are really welcome with the campaign looming ahead. Uh, also, after the speeches, we'll have books available for purchase. Uh, a table at the front for $10, uh, and more than welcome to, to uh, come and buy a copy. Uh, my name is Shane Prince, and I'm the right wing convener of Labour for Refugees, <laughs> <laughs> both nationally and in New South Wales. And I'm humbled and honoured to hold that position, which our guest of honour created. Uh, John Robertson is the leader of the greatest party, the greatest state, the greatest nation in the world. And we are honoured that he is with us this evening to launch his book. The Federal Parliamentary Party appears to have accepted the misconception that the policies of power are necessary and effective to prevent taking, people taking dangerous voyages to Australia. It is the same false argument that was prevalent in our party in 2001 after the Tampa election, and that John Robertson fought against Babylon League uh, in 2002. The falsity of the assumption has reasserted itself within the party amongst the profession, some professional politicians in Canberra, like schools on the ground waiting for the running. The leader must have a sense of deja vu about the state of the internal debate on refugees within the Labor Party. In doing my research this evening, it became obvious that in 2002, Labour for Refugees was formed for the very purpose of changing and challenging the policy that federal Labour now seeks to have, which is a mirror image of how its policies. Labour for Refugees, uh, led by uh, our guest, was agitating for a more humane, compassionate approach consistent with Labour's duty, which was so well captured by Chief Whitt, to work for the betterment of mankind, not only here, but anywhere we can give a helping hand. And if it were not for that, the Labour movement would not be worth fighting. I'm sorry to say that while our Speaker presided over a victory against the Howard policies within the Labour Party, I have presided over the defeat and capitulation of the Labour government to those very policies. Since the Prime Minister's expert panel report in 2012, Labour and Government has reintroduced the entirety of Howard's anti-refugees policies and has in fact gone further. We have record numbers of people in mandatory detention, including large numbers of children and families. We have reinstated the Pacific Solution by reopening Manus Island and Nauru, with even fewer human rights protections than existed under Howard. We have reintroduced temporary protection visas under the disguise of temporary safe haven visas. We have gone further than Howard by simply refusing to process asylum claims by anyone who has arrived by boat since August 2012. We have gone further than Howard in the dream possible by excising the whole of the Australian mainland from the migration scene. And yet the boats have been coming in greater and greater numbers. The since the most draconian policies were implemented in August 2012, having started in that direction almost three years ago. The number of boat arrivals has more than doubled uh, this year, over last year, and far exceeds anything seen under the humane policies that Labor for Refugees secured within the Labor Party, uh, the leadership of John Robertson, to which he was instr instrumental. We now have very clear and powerful evidence that Howard's policies, as copied and extended by the Gillard government, simply do not stop the rights. The only evidence is that the re with the reintroduction of those policies, the number of boat arrivals in Australia has increased. The evidence is clear that it is not the humane policies of Labour and refugees that have failed, rather, it is the policies of the Howard government which have comprehensively failed to stop the rights. It's hard to see how the escalation of the deterrence option 
uh, has anywhere left to go. Short of asking the Australian Navy to become pirates and executioners once removed, as Tony Abbott seems to suggest, we should now say we have done with deterrence. If the objective is to stop the boats, it has just not worked, and there is nothing to suggest that it will work. It is time to treat refugees as people, to walk in their shoes, to understand them and to stop them from Unarmed men, women and children who have committed no crime are no threat to war security. They come to Australia seeking freedom from our own enemies. It is just a scurrilous lie to vilify and marginalise the weak and vulnerable to make some of them feel better about themselves. What must be understood, as this book and John Robinson have sought to explain, is that the problem of the taking to boats was created by the Australian government under John Howard. The deliberate and cruel policy of effectively shutting the door to resettlement of refugees from Afghanistan and Indonesia on our very doorstep is the very thing that has fueled and driven what is now called People's Month. From 2001 to 2010, an average of 56 refugees a year were settled, resettled in Afghanistan and Indonesia. <coughs> There is simply no cue in Indonesia. There is a blocked gate. The Australian government has shut the gates and forced people to take desperate steps to complete their journey of freedom. The way to stop the boats is simple to be done to mind. Spark a queue. Process people fairly and decently in Indonesia and start allocating reasonable numbers of places so there is some hope, so that desperation does not drive parents to risk their lives for their children's future which we all know we would do for our own children. The bureaucrats and government have forced this evil dilemma on vulnerable people and then blamed the victims for the result. That must stop. It is my determination and that of labour for refugees to continue John's great work to shine a light on the lives of successive bureaucrats and governments fighting their own complicity in creating this cruel and humane situation. The men and women of Australia expect from labour a light on the hill they expect us to be composed of committed men and women with values and integrity. They are dismayed when they see our party fail in these expectations. Out of the ashes of Labour and Government of New South Wales, our current guest, John Robertson, has emerged as a man who meets those expectations. We can only hope that that's contagious. I give you John Robertson.